The next session is an update on iWARP. Hello, everybody. My name is Brian Hassauer. Uh, I'm an RDMA architect from Austin, Texas. I work for Intel. Um, I've been doing RDMA uh, for many years, but I've never presented at this conference. So, pleasure to be here. I've got about 40 or 50 slides today, so I hope we <laughs> will be able to make it before lunch. This is my April Fool's joke. Ha ha ha. Okay. Now, I have a pretty short presentation uh, with an iWARP update. I recognize it's lunchtime, so I'll try to be brief. But if anybody, I think it's short enough. If anybody has questions, you know, just ask me as we go. Okay, so there's increasing interest in iWARP uh, nowadays. Uh, I think what we were seeing is, uh, uh, you know, some emerging RDMA use cases, which you're probably all familiar with. We have uh, high-performance computing, which most people are interested in here. Uh, but in addition, uh, we're seeing uh, interest uh, with file and block storage, NVM access, virtual machine migration. I think these are all things that uh, people have talked about uh, uh, over the last couple of days. One thing that uh, we definitely see is that virtualization and cloud deployments do place uh, important requirements on these use cases. So, uh, uh, you know, we need to, to work to make sure just because we have HPC uh, solved in the general use case, if we move to virtualiz virtualized or cloud uh, environments, you know, we may see different uh, requirements there. One of the things that, uh, one of the reasons uh, iWARP is, uh, is, is viewed as interesting in these use cases is that uh, it's, it's engineered for typical Ethernet, so uh, we don't have any uh, requirements for DCB or QCN, things like that. Uh, it's, uh, it's engineered for best effort Ethernet networks. Uh, of course, uh, uh, native routability is viewed as important. Uh, I think this is, um, Increasingly uh, known on the Ethernet that you need to be uh, to have native routability. Uh, uh, we have multipathing at layer two and at layer three, and uh, iWarp is based on uh, the TCP transport, which is reliable and proven. Now, this is a list, uh, this is describing the iWARP standards that are out there now. Uh, all of the uh, RFCs uh, that define iWARP are being maintained by the IETF STORM group, uh, the storage maintenance group. Uh, and this is just a list of the, uh, let's see which one of these is the pointer. Mm, it's hard to say. Uh, this is just a list of the of the RFCs that have already finalized. So the first three on this list are the original 2007 RFCs that define iWARP, uh, the three layers of iWARP. Uh, but a couple of new RFCs have come out, uh, I think in 2012. Uh, 6580 is just defining all of the error codes and, and numbers of iWARP uh, in uh, IANA registry. And then... 6581 is a tweak to RDMA connection establishment for iWARP that uh, enabled interoperability between vendors. So these are all finished. Uh, there's a couple of new ones that are being worked on now, uh, and that's what this next slide talks about. Um, the first one up there, and you can get these off the IETF website, uh, the first one is uh, Storm RDMA P EXT 09. This is adding atomic operations and immediate data to iWARP. Uh, the, the original iWARP specs don't have these. Uh, so we had authors uh, on that RFC uh, uh, from Intel, Broadcom, and Chelsea. Uh, this one is not finished yet, but it's almost finished. So I was talking to Tom the other day. He told me it's, uh, it's been approved by the IESG. I think it's in... Uh, 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 comment resolution phase with them and should be going into the RFC editor queue um, fairly quickly. The next uh, one up, uh, the one that's sort of on deck uh, next in storm is uh, this one draft IETF wood. Uh, that one is another extension to 5040 that adds send with immediate data and IB style RDMA reads. Uh, this one, is, the authors are from, from Intel, uh, 
And it's, it's sort of just submitted uh, for initial review, and, and I think it's, it's going to be starting uh, some reviews in the storm group, you know, pretty soon. Of, of all of these, uh, the one that, that I think is maybe the most interesting and maybe least known by folks is the IB style RUMA read. So I put some, some uh, drawings in here to explain the difference there in case anyone is interested. Um, a traditional IWARP RDMA read looks like this. So if you've got two NICs uh, and a source buffer over on the right that's been uh, advertised uh, out to the, to the client, what you'll get is a uh, SendQ Wookie posted down by the client that's uh, an RDMA read op, and it has two S tags uh, describing uh, both the sync buffer and the source buffer. Okay, so this is how IWARP does RDMA reads today. Uh, when you get traffic out on the network, the read request message will go across to uh, the, the source, uh, and both S tags for the source and the sync buffer are out on the network. Uh, that results in a DMA read, obviously, and then the read response goes back, again, out on the network uh, with an S tag that describes the sync buffer. And that allows the sync NIC to place the data. Now, because you uh, exposed the sync buffer out onto the fabric, uh, typically most uh, IO transaction protocols will, uh, will uh, finish up this sequence with a local invalidate operation to invalidate the, the sync buffer. So that's, that's the way it works on IWARP. Uh, if you look at the way, just to compare that to the way it works on InfiniBand or uh, uh, probably on Rocky, the same, same way, this would be the IB style. Here you uh, issue a sync wookie with the read op. Uh, you've got your local sync buffer, which can be one or more, uh, you know, uh, scatter gather elements listed out there in the, in the wookie. Uh, and then you're, you're really only describing the source buffer uh, with, with an S tag or an R key. So again, this kind of uh, request goes across. It doesn't have the sync buffer S tag. Uh, just goes across with the, this, the R key or this, the S tag describing the source buffer. And, uh, you know, when, when the read response comes back, there's no tag, but the uh, RDMA NIC on the sync side knows where to place the data because it, it's saving the information from the original uh, SendQ Wookie. So here there's no local invalidate required. Uh, uh, which is a difference uh, with, uh, with how it works on the iWarp side. So the in, the, the in progress RFCs that I just mentioned will enable this flow uh, on iWarp. And I, I think this is a pretty important difference for RDMA reads with, with applications. So we're, what we're trying to do uh, with these in progress RFCs uh, is uh, you know, eliminate these little differences between IWARP and, and uh, base InfiniBand so that uh, you don't have application problems when you try to run your app on IWARP. Um, and, and as far as I know, these, are, these RFCs that are in flight uh, uh, remove all the known application differences between IWARP and InfiniBand. Anybody think of any ones, any, any other ones? I mean, of course, I'm not talking about like XRC or different other things, but for kind of baseline InfiniBand, uh, we, we believe these, these should be, uh, make, make app portability quite, quite easy. Okay. Uh, just a slide on the IETF alignment with IWARP. Uh, uh, you know, IWARP leverages TCP IP, and uh, so we get our reliable transport and congestion management from TCP, which is an IETF standard. Uh, we also can natively and, and easily use the explicit congestion notification that is also defined by the IETF. Uh, IWARP is, uh, is naturally uh, aligned with uh, the tunneling and network overlays that are being worked uh, in the uh, IETF as well. And um, uh, something a lot of people don't know about IWARP is that 
Uh, there's, there's something equivalent in, in, in the iWarp space to the InfiniBand unreliable data, datagram transport. Uh, typically, the, the iWarp vendors will implement UD using UDP on the wire. So, for example, uh, I know, uh, I don't want to speak for Chelsea, for example, but I know both uh, uh, Intel and Chelsea have this style of UD capability uh, in in our iWarp implementations. Okay. Uh, I get asked uh, quite a bit about, uh, you know, the, the sort of uh, momentum in the iWarp space and, uh, uh, you know, what, what kind of ecosystem there is out there. So this slide is attempting to uh, describe, describe that. Uh, we do believe uh, that the, the industry is supporting the evolution of iWarp. You know, you, you saw there's quite a few authors on some of those uh, in, in flight RFCs. Uh, we also uh, do have very good alignment with the IETF uh, uh, and the Storm Group has shown good uh, willingness to evolve the iWarp standards. Uh, we, we hope to make it, take advantage of that in the future. Uh, we do have uh, in OFED 3.5-2, we do have stable drivers from uh, two different uh, hardware vendors. Uh, the CXG is Chelsea and the NES is Intel. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to report today that uh, Intel is implementing iWarp RDMA as a key capability in a uh, IP block called Fort Park. Uh, Fort Park is uh, technology that will be integrated into future Intel server chipsets. So my call to action, uh, is uh, please, if you, uh, if you haven't, uh, participate in the STORM uh, standards reviews that are ongoing. Uh, work with uh, the ARNIC vendors. Uh, you know, try to get support for these in-progress RFCs as soon as you can. And the other thing I would say is I think we, we need some kind of dialogue between the IETF and uh, and uh, the IBTA and, and this group to uh, define baseline of RDMA extensions as we go forward so that we have uh, in, an equal set of capabilities across uh, all the different flavors of RDMA. Okay, that's my presentation. Any questions? Yes. Do you currently support UD multicast? Yeah, that can be done with uh, with, with UDP. So you have the joint multicast group with multicast group yeah. first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't, I think, I think, I, I can't speak, say, for example, for Chelsea, but that, that should be doable with. Right. I can't speak for all the different vendors, but uh, that, that should be supported. <laughs> I can't speak for all the different vendors, but yeah. Yes. Uh, now, do you have uh, any way to, within verbs, detect the presence of the new iWork features, uh, like right with immediate that uh, are not present in uh, older iWork adapters or older uh, versions of the iWork standard? Yeah, we're, we're going to be adding that in. That'll be like a query RNIC kind of a capability. Okay. Yes, Brian. But I ask you to, to go one slide back. Okay. Quite an okay. interesting announcement. Uh, what is this fork talk about? This is a, a fully integrated uh, RMA engine into the CPU? Or yeah, this this is a, a, our first public announcement of this. Okay, it's interesting. I mean, maybe just... Yeah, I, I would like to make a big deal out of that. It's a huge accomplishment as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Uh, so that uh, so means that would obsolete all the adapters? Which no, no, I, I wouldn't say that. But of course, uh, we, we're, we're happy to get this in as a baseline capability in the chipset. Absolutely. Is there a timeline already that it can happen? Yes, I can discuss that with you under NDA. Of course, we can't. I, I would love to be able to tell you when and give all the details, but this, this is what what I can announce today. I have one more question regarding the 
is in Reddit data. I think we discussed this already. Um, in Finiband, has a 32-bit value, and it would be better to have bigger versions there. And there was discussion mm -hmm. within the working groups already that 64-bit would be maybe something we should go for. Well, you know, our our real focus, as I mentioned, on these RFCs was to to eliminate differences with with InfiniBand, not add new ones. So, but but. But I think we, we, we should, you know, if there's a real need for that, we should work on uh, adding that together. Because if we, if we put it in iWarp and it's not in InfiniBand yeah, or Rocky, yeah, it's... Yeah, I level it, it would be still maybe 32 bits, but uh, you, are, you would be uh, able to, to transport larger pointers, for example. Right. In different APIs. Well, okay, I, that's a good point, and I think I think it's uh, you know something we can maybe discuss. Uh, that second RFC is is going into discussion, so uh, why don't we uh, start a thread on that topic and see where we get. Oh, okay, yes. You know, uh, I would love to answer that question too, but uh, 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 maybe we can talk about that uh, as an NDA conversation. It, it's it's a it's a full featured device. <laughs> but okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, time for lunch.